couple of years ago, Fujifilm announced and released the X-T3. I really like this camera. For the ordinary filmmaker, this camera is filled with tons and tons of features. I would say it's very equivalent to, or sorry, it, poor grammar, it is equivalent to the Panasonic GH5, but it beats it in one key area. The autofocus is face detect and produces much more reliable and better results. But the GH5 has much better in-body image stabilization. Well, when I say much better, I would say that the Panasonic GH5 is class leading when it comes to in-body image stabilization, and it's better than the X-T3 because the X-T3 didn't have it whatsoever. But the X-T3 is loaded with features. I almost bought this camera last year, but what held me back was the lack of IBIS. Because when I looked at the lenses, there were very few that had image stabilization. And because I do a lot of run and gun work outside of YouTube, that provided me with far too few, or sorry, that limited me far too much. So I held off. I looked at a lot of cameras last year, and one of the main reasons I held off, and I have to this day, and I'm still shooting with a Canon 70D, is because I knew that come the first quarter of 2020, we were going to see a lot of cameras coming out. We've already had the announcement of the Canon 1DX Mark III, and we, we've received rumors that the Canon EOS R Mark II will be announced next month before CP+. Today, I have an update on the X-T4. First of all, let me give you the quick highlights. The X-T4 is coming with IBIS, so it solves that problem. It's going to have 6K60, and it's going to be announced with all its specifications on February the 4th, and it'll be available for sale in March 2020. I should just say March, shouldn't I? It's going to be available for sale in March. You might even be able to pre-order it starting February the 4th. IBIS is really, really a wonderful tool. The nice thing about IBIS is no matter what lens you put on the camera, it's going to provide stabilization. So even if you look at getting Sigma or other lenses to adapt onto the body, this gives you stabilization. Now generally, I like to stick with the lenses produced by the manufacturer. There's usually caveats involved. If you've got 5-axis image stabilization, but you, you use another manufacturer's lens, you might be limited to three axis stabilization. And sometimes there are issues with compatibility or issues with autofocus. So instead of having to waste all my time researching and figure out if there are any issues, I usually just stick to the manufacturer's lenses. But the other big thing that I just talked about is 6K60. Think about that for a minute. We were just excited to see 4K60 just a couple of years ago. If you're producing content in 4K, this gives you an expanded area that you can punch into without losing any detail in 4K. We don't know if 6K60 is going to provide us, provide us with 10-bit 422 internal. Now, the X-T3 did provide us with 10-bit 422, but that was through external recording. Otherwise, you got 10-bit 420 internal. So with the X-T4, we're going to get... We're, go we're going to have 10-bit 422 internal recording up to 4K, I'm just, I just don't have any information about what 6K60 is going to be. But we're just a couple of weeks away, and once that camera is released, I'll do a full video comparing the X-T3 to the X-T4, and I'll also look at the competition. Should you get the X-T4, or should you look at other cameras? It, it's really tough to compare the X-T4 to other cameras in the market. The X-T4 has the same level of features as a lot of full-frame cameras, and in the case of Canon, they don't even offer 6K. With Panasonic, you have to go to the $4,000 S1H. So, if 6K is a big deal to you, you're kind of limited. Now, the GH5 is, as I mentioned, is, it's a very close relative to the, or I'd say it's a close relative to the X-T4 just in terms of the number of features. Panasonic has loaded a lot of features into that camera. Should you get the X-T4? If you've waited this long, wait a few more weeks, wait a few more months, see what Sony comes out with. We haven't heard anything about the Sony A7S III, but we do know that Sony's going to be announcing it within the first three months of this year. Panasonic's going to be announcing their GH6. 
I did a video on the G86 just a little while ago, but I don't believe Panasonic's going to move away from their depth from defocus contrast detect autofocus system. Boy, that's a mouthful. No, not when they released the Panasonic S1H just a little while ago, and guess what? It still had that same focus system. Yes, it's better, but it's still not reliable. It's still not trustworthy. So the GH6 will be better. If autofocus is important to you, if you do a lot of run and gun work, then the GH6 is not for you. But if you're doing a lot of YouTube work or event work, then yes, the GH6 produces really good results. But then again, so does the X-T4. I think these two cameras are going to keep, compete head to head against each other a whole lot more. If you guys have any questions about this video, drop me a comment or question down below. I usually get back to you guys within 24 hours. If you'd like to receive notifications of new videos as they come out, go ahead and punch that subscribe button, then click on that little bell icon and choose all. Then you'll get notifications of new videos as they come out. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.